more voiceover people on here, and uh, I figured I uh, you were on my list anyway to reach out to. And awesome. So, yeah, I'm glad it uh, worked out and our schedules worked out. Um, so first of all, I just want to say I love your cats very much. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yes, the pumpkin spice one just came up. Mm, okay. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Effie will do that sometimes with me too. Um, before we jump in, uh, I guess I don't usually do this, but I figure maybe introduce like what like what kind of what you do um, and maybe a uh, few of the things you've uh, been in and stuff like that. What I do, I do a few different things. I'm a voice actress. I work at a kitten nursery. Um, I I cosplay mostly for fun. Um, and sort of like an aspiring David Bowie impersonator, I guess. Mm, yeah. Well, it's a good person to aspire to be. <laughs> yes. So what do you do at the uh, the kitten shelter? Um, basically, we take care of orphaned oh, newborn kittens. And right now, because it's kind of in between kitten seasons, we have some older cats, so we're not really bottle feeding. But when okay. kitten season happens, then we bottle feed orphaned kittens and kind of like get them ready to be adopted or fostered yeah i feel like if i worked at one of those shelters it would just be too tempting to uh, adopt every single cat that comes in it's uh, so hard there's always some i want to adopt and my roommate goes no we have four you cannot have any more right so so you have four now mm -hmm. and what are their names so there are shiro mina jareth and siler okay and which one is the black one? The black yes. one is Mina, and she's afraid of humans because mm. she was astray when we adopted her. So okay. it's very hard to get her to like come to me or not to run away. Yeah. Um, when I see pictures of her, I will uh, link them to my wife because she, your Mina looks just like our cat. <laughs> oh, how cute! Oh uh, yeah. So I'm always like, it's they're twins basically. Um, I love black I cats. I thought you had a black and white one for some reason. No, nope. she's pictures. all black. Huh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Maybe else. you're mixing up. Yeah, there's a lot of cats on the internet. Um, <laughs> cats of Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. I want. I want to make a. I want to. Sh I always want to show off uh, figures of my cat to the to the interwebs, make her a star. Yeah. Same with um, the one I'm holding right now, Jared, who's the pumpkin spice. Mm, one. Yeah. I'm always sharing pictures of him because he's just so adorable and everyone's like, oh, he's so fluffy and soft. The funny thing is I wasn't really a cat person uh, before, because my wife um, got the cat uh, before we moved together. And before that I was like, eh, I, I wasn't, I guess, that into cats, but when you, when you have a cat around you all the time, I I feel like a fool. Like, how could I not have loved cats? That's why I hear constantly from people like this. Like, like, person because they never really grew up around them, and then, you know, when they have to live with a cat. Because I guess my dad wasn't a cat person before he met my mom, and mm. now he likes cats. <laughs> oh, and now I love cats. Um, I think maybe it was because I, uh, I guess I never had much luck with cats being, like, showing any sort of notice to me. Um, mm -hmm. But now I feel like I'm, I can, uh, what's the word, vibe with cats better? Because now that I go to, when I go to other pe people's places now, I find that I actually get along well with the cats, whereas before, maybe it's just a way to approach the cat. I don't know, but. Yeah. Yeah. But now this and cat And if you has, heard that that was him, like, jumping up on things around my room. Oh, yeah. Effie loves jumping on the desk when I'm doing things or up on the bookshelves. So, yeah, I, I opened my computer today, and one of the cats had been laying on the keyboard, and so there was just like, it opened a Google search with just random <laughs> letters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think my, I think she, my cat once did that, I think I posted on like my wife's Facebook or something like that. It was <laughs> some, something like that, I forget. Or she like saw it and like kept, she like posted it because she thought, she thought it was so funny. And I bet everyone knew too, cat people would know when they see that. Oh yeah, they know exactly what that is. Um, so what are you currently, I know you're, I know you, um, 
do cosplay and um but what are you currently into i guess maybe media wise like are you watching or playing or doing anything any, consuming anything fun um well now i started playing fire emblem heroes because my character that i voiced just came out recently yeah, and i saw that congratulations on that yeah i didn't know like i had no idea when she was going to be released because they recorded everybody at once right you know right. for all the characters and yeah. stuff yeah. and I didn't know it was like a thing where they were adding characters because we usually don't really get any information because they want to keep stuff as confidential as possible obviously right. so you know then when I saw the game came out I was like oh I'm in this but I should I should like see and I'm really glad that I double checked yeah and, and knew that my character wasn't there at launch because then I could have gotten in really big trouble if I was like hey I'm in this <laughs> yeah, I'm in oh, sacred, I'm in this, oh sacred stones characters aren't aren't yet yeah yeah have so, you played um, uh, Sacred Stones? I have not, but it looks fun. It's really good. Have you played any uh, of the Fire Emblems besides uh, Heroes? Um, I haven't owned any. I've, I've just like kind of messed around with Dabbled them a little them. bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've always heard good things. I mm -hmm. just never got around to picking one of them up. Right. And then for this yeah. one, I was kind of waiting to download it till my character came out because I didn't want to waste the orbs on like. <laughs> on, yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta get your character. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm so bad with, like, the gacha-type games. Like, I have the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure one, mm. and I'm always just... I keep trying to get um, the character Yoshikage Kira, who looks like David Bowie, and yeah. I cannot get that one, and I've been playing the game for so long, and I've tried and tried and tried. So I know that I would be tempted to spend this stuff. And then, I, of course, I play Love Live, which I know you play, too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I play Idol Master, so oh, Idol I'm like Master. really yeah. bad with getting addicted to those types of games where you're essentially gambling to get the characters you want. And yeah. so I was like, oh, okay, well, here we go. And I actually have a new account for Fire Emblem now because one of my Twitter followers was like, oh, I have a friend who actually like rolled your character mm. at the start, so if you want it... Um, we'll just make like a dummy account and transfer it to you. And I was like, yes, please. And <laughs> yes, since please, I only yeah. started on the other one like a couple days ago, yeah. I'm like, okay, I guess it's not a big deal to lose my progress. But I had tweeted my friend code and like a hundred people added me. So now I'm like, sorry, yeah. everybody's going to have to add me again. <laughs> Listen, Erica takes priority here. You got you to gotta have her. Absolutely. Um, man, mobile game games are just, they, they, they mess me up real bad. Um, what do you play Idol Master on? I, uh, is there an English version, or do you play like the Japanese version, or what? No, but um, I do understand a fair amount of Japanese. Mm. So, like reading games, because the JoJo game is like that too. Like, okay. Um, the issue that I have is um, because it's been a while since I studied it and this and that. Some of the kanji, I'm like, I don't know what this kanji is. <laughs> but yeah. usually, like, just knowing what I do, I can get around pretty easy in these. And then there's also, like, guides online and stuff. Oh, yeah, I've been able yeah. to figure it out pretty much for myself, but I know people who don't read Japanese at all a lot of times find those really helpful. Because mm. it explains, like, oh, these are what the menus are and stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, I know some people um, will use, like, those. Like it shows you all the buttons and what each one means and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. I've been I've been interested in Idol Master, but I uh, yes. since I can't read any Japanese, I guess I could maybe use a guide. But I think there was an English release at some point, but I think that's either not supported or gone. Because I know it used to be on iPhone, but I think something went. Maybe they took it down or something. I don't know. Well, it must not be for like the version that's out now because I've never seen a translated okay. version. I mean, I know people have like done fan translations on YouTube and stuff of the your little like um, cutscenes, like when you max your bond with a character and stuff. Yeah. Um, I really like the character Mika Jodasaki. She's basically attack. my waifu, uh -huh. and um, so. Yeah, I finally got a card of her because it was this lottery thing where you could pick a card that you want. Which okay. Is really cool. I've never seen a game do that where it's like, oh, you just get to pick. Oh, just this for card. just like so it's like a draw, but you get to actually choose the character. No, it, it's a random draw normally, but it was just like a special event they did where if you got like a lottery thing, then you could choose like an oh, SR that you okay. wanted essentially. Gotcha, so. Gotcha. So of course I picked Mika, and I also cosplayed her at Anime Los Angeles. Mm. 
Going back to uh, JoJo, which I still have not seen, but I know I know you love JoJo, but I I really have no idea what to what to think of it. Can you pitch JoJo to me? What about JoJo do you love? Um, there's a lot of things that I really like about it. I feel like it. Um, you know, for a while I was getting kind of disillusioned with a lot of anime because I felt like a lot of it. Mm followed certain tropes and stuff like that and i know there's a lot of stuff out there that's not like that but yeah it was like so much of the stuff that i was seeing i was like oh i'm, I'm tired of this like you know just like fan service oh yeah me too characters yeah. And stuff like that. i don't know i just like wanted something that was not that i guess and then yeah some years ago my friends were like hey you should check out this anime etc etc um and it's like manly men beating each other up. I was like, I don't know, that doesn't really sound like my thing. I mean, I vaguely heard of it before because um, I used to play competitive Street Fighter and I cosplayed Jury and this, mm. somebody had told me offhandedly like, oh yeah, did you know she was based off a character named Jolene from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? And it was like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? That sounds like some like show that four kids would do or something. Right, you know it sounds like I mean? a Bobo Bo kind of show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people still ask me, like, oh, yeah, you like that show that's like Jojo, 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 right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> like, um, Hold you gotta see too many Joes in there, but, uh, yeah, so then my friend showed it to me, and I was like, okay, I don't really get this, like, based on the first few episodes, but I'll give it a mm. shot, whatever. Mm. Yep. So I watched some more of it, and then this was before part three even started to be animated, so it was like parts right. one and two were out. And okay. then, by the time I got to part two, I was like, okay, I'm, like, getting into this. I like this. And then by the time I finished part two, because of all, like, the feels and stuff, it had just... Mm. It basically got me, and I was, like... I didn't really know too much about, like, the community or the, the fandom or whatever, so I was just, like, talking to my friend. And, and the fandom definitely wasn't as big back then as it is now, but... Yeah. So I talked to my friend, and I was like, oh, like... You know, I heard there's other parts, I don't want to wait, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, re you should read the manga, and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, so I started reading the manga, and, um, you know, now now that's like a, a big thing in the community. It's like, read the mango, and stuff like yeah, that. But, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> especially because there's so many parts now. Exactly. So then I started reading, and then I got to part four, and I don't know if you know too much about part four, but for the longest time there wasn't a good translation of it available. And the translation available was basically like as if someone had run it through Google Translate from Chinese to English. Is that the Duang? Du yeah. Duang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so it was, it had great lines like, um, "Who in face are you?" and mm. "The rain sound like juice day," and <laughs> "Get a feeling so complicated." So there was a lot of memes and stuff that came from that translation. And I okay. had messaged like a couple friends of mine. I was like, "This doesn't seem right. What's with this translation?" They're like, "Ah ha ha! No, don't read that version. Here's the good version that's that's like coming out, but it wasn't fully out yet. So some pages were still like, like the first parts were all translated with the good translation, and then I had to read the rest in Duang, and so there were like yeah. entire parts where they just didn't even bother to translate it." And so the oh, stand yeah. cries just had like the one character, and people in the fandom call it abaj because that's kind of it looks like it says like A B A J. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, wow, this is. This is so that's cool. what that quote's from. Get a feeling so comp. Mm -hmm. I've seen that before. Oh, okay, oh, so that's a JoJo. Yeah. Um, is there? There's four parts out now, right? There's a. a they announce a fifth season. Um, or? it's almost like. For sure, that part five yeah. is going to get animated by this point. Um, and then the manga is on part eight now. There's a new chapter coming out around every month. Sometimes they skip a month. But mm, okay. And how many years has that been going now? Since 1987, which was the year right. I was born, and I am 29, almost 30, so that was almost 30 years of JoJo. Your Hot damn. Is under attack. I, sh I need to get, that, get on that at some point. 
A lot of people say um, that they really got involved with part two, but yeah. uh, I, I intend to watch all of it. So. Oh, of course. But like I tell people, some people like they watch, and, and part one is good, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah. some people watch it and then they're just not really sure, like, you know, what to make of it or whatever, and then they really start getting in, because you kind of have to get into the feel of the series, like a lot of it is over the top, you know, just sometimes people have to kind of get used to how it goes and and just fully embrace the absurdity and the bizarreness but um i was gonna say another thing that i can use to sell it to you are you a classic rock fan by chance um yeah i mean i i enjoy classic rock yeah yeah do you have any favorites um not i'm not i wouldn't say i'm like uh an expert on it but i know that a lot of the stands and stuff are named after um different groups right yep yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's pretty great. Like, one way that I always sell JoJo's to people as well is I talk about how in part two, these four <laughs> super muscular men come out of this pillar, and their names are Santana, Wham, Cars, and ACDC. ACDC, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then nice. you have, like, Robert EO Speedwagon and um, Killer Queen in part four. Yeah. Which I hear they change the names in the uh, the Crunchyroll translation. Is that right? Yeah. Something like that? Mm -hmm. Because of copyright and stuff like that. Yeah. So you'll you'll obviously like still hear them say what it's actually supposed to be. You know, <laughs> right. Like, Kid a queen and stuff like that. But <laughs> then the subtitles are like my deadly queen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh man. I I think everyone's always coming in to do it. Like I got it. Just because that has such a wrong sort of place. Um, mm. You still playing? Still playing Love Live? Yeah. Oh yeah. I I play that all day every day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's best girl? Answer carefully. Oh, it's Umi. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct yeah, yeah. answer. <laughs> of course. Um. I yeah. I have not stopped playing. Um. I think there was a period where I was maybe gonna stop, but then they updated it and added up full slew of new, like, achievements and, like, a whole bunch of new things, so I'm suckered back in, and I don't see myself quitting anytime soon. Right, it's just like the Pokemon Go update recently, how a lot of people are like, eh, we're not playing it as much because there's nothing really new, and then finally they're like, haha, surprise, new Pokemon, guys. Oh yeah, I, I have not uh, gotten back into it, but uh, have you, how is the new update? It's good, it's good. Um, I probably should make my way to the Santa Monica Pier at some point, which is like an hour away from me, but it's there's so many good Pokemon. Like, my favorite Pokemon is Gyarados, so when I was mm. trying to like catch all those hundreds of Magikarp to get my Gyarados, I would go there. Yes. I mean, just it kind of sucks because parking is expensive around there and stuff, but there's mm. so many. I'm sure there'll be a lot of Pokemon Go players out there now that the new update is out. Right, right. Yeah, since, uh, I just, um, since I'm in Michigan, the weather has not been kind enough for me to be going around, but I'm, I think maybe next month I might get back into the game, especially because the new, the new gen is out. Mm -hmm. um, so, one thing uh, I wanted to kind of talk about is that you brought, are you started the, the voice acting club? Yes! And so that's kind of like the sort of, I guess, revival of the, um, what was the previous form? Um, it was still called the Voice Second Club, but basically over the past three-ish years, maybe, it just kind of, um, you know, nobody was really around to maintain it, and it was just being overrun with, like, you know, this and that. It, yeah. There were too many, you know, just the way the board was structured wasn't going to work anymore, and it was beyond right. the point of cleaning up, so, yeah. we're like, okay, what if we just redo it into a brand new community, we'll have, like, you know, a little bit different rules to kind of make more of a focus on, like, original content, and I guess, you know, like, have it be taken more seriously, etc., and mm. there are less of the social forums on it because back when the BAC was started in 2005, 2006-ish, um, like Facebook wasn't really that much of a thing. Um, I don't even know right. if Facebook was 
around. Like I know MySpace <laughs> was the big Facebook thing. Facebook might have been like in the very early stages. But maybe that was like when like only oh like God. certain college students could use it. Probably yeah. at that point. And I don't remember like Twitter really being a thing. So people would go to forums to social I remember it was like forums and like live journal <laughs> where I oh, yeah. socialize on the internet and stuff. And yeah. you know, but now that there are all these places for people to go and do like social media like I remember we would actually have a forum for people to post pictures of themselves back on the old VAC mm. and they would just see and you'd see like a woman post a thread and it would be six pages long and then a guy post a thread he got maybe one response and it's like cool bro right. or whatever <laughs> but yeah. I mean now people have their social media for that so we don't really need that kind of stuff on the forum and it helps I guess just keep it from being overrun with like drama and unrelated right. things. And keeping it a little more professional, I guess, in terms of the atmosphere. Yeah, that was a big thing. Um, some people were upset about it, but most people were like pretty happy about the fact that we're like not allowing yes. traditional fan dubs. I mean, if someone wants to do like a comic dub or if somebody wants to do like, like machinimas or like parodies mm. are okay. But yeah. we're basically like saying you know if it's just Lightning. something where you're taking footage from something that exists and you're just redoing the dialogue like i don't know we just don't it's so easy for the boards to be overrun with those mm -hmm. and we just yeah, don't yeah, want definitely. that to kind of be the thing because people would complain about that all the time because there are like casting call sites online where people do stuff like that and that's like all it is so They're like, well, like even if they're cool with auditioning for work that is okay, they're like, well, I want to like do stuff I can actually put on my resume. I want to, you know, original stuff at least. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like, you know, so we are allowing like fan content. Like I know there's a lot of people who post like Five Nights at Freddy's, like fan games and stuff like that. So like that's okay, but. Um, if somebody's like, oh, I'm going to redub the entire first season of, you know, whatever show. Naruto or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Plus, a lot of people just don't finish those projects. Like, I'm sure oh, yeah. you remember, you know, I started a lot on the VAA. Your middle tower is under attack. Fresh me. Your middle tower is under attack. Hey, and there are always people who are like, oh, I'm fan dubbing the entire series of Evangelion. I'm like, no, you're not. You have no idea how much we're We're never going to finish that, right? Your middle tower has fallen. Head now. Commit to one thing first, and then maybe go on. But to yeah, a lot, and that goes for like a lot of things on the internet, um, where people will just, uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. Entire thing, you're not. Gonna do that. Yeah, and I mean, I may or may not have in my early days actually produced full episode dubs of things and mm. it's a lot of work oh yeah i can imagine um and, and you've been you've been on the uh active on the internet for quite a while uh and you um i've it's been very um cool to see kind of like how your career has risen um Aww. Through the oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, but, but seriously though, um, it's actually very impressive. Um, kind of like watching, like where seeing where you're at now and where you started. Um, and I think, yes, I think having something like the voice acting club is a good thing for people who are just starting out or who you know don't know where. A lot of people will ask. Um, and I'm sure you get a lot of questions like Oh my this too, gosh, I'm sure do you I... do too as well. <laughs> oh my god, all the time. Which is fine, but it's pretty much just like, how do I start voice acting? Start voice acting. And practice and, you know. Yeah, and people would say, it. like, well, how do I, you know, especially if they live 
in the middle of nowhere and this and that and they don't want to be able to play sites because they don't have any experience yet yeah, and right. stuff and so I'm always telling people like I'll do it online as a hobby but it was like you know with these sites down and stuff where could I I mean I was like yeah you can look for stuff on like YouTube and Tumblr but um uh -huh. you know then I heard recently the VAA went down as well due to malware because when oh. the VAC kind of just like fell apart, it was like, um, well, there's like the VAA, there's like casting call dot club now as a thing, but then people were, like posting. I saw a post going like, we really need resources yeah. now that the VAA is down, and you know, it's like, where are we gonna go? And there is right. like the the casting call site, but like people said, it seems to be like mostly fandoms that are posted there. But I've seen, and for people who are, or especially people who are kind of like maybe like in between like sometimes they're doing professional work maybe they're doing some indie games but they're looking for more work along that line you know it's like yeah. where are they gonna go right so right so i hit up some of the old admins and i was like so like am i crazy or should we do <laughs> this and then i i just put out a tweet to see and it got like 200 <laughs> likes or something I'm like, yeah what? yeah so, that became a thing, but right now the issue is that um, we're trying to get more content creators to join because we had a really big surge of new members when um, on January 1st the official launch happened. We had like a sort of like a pre launch before that, but um, yeah, the issue is trying to get more people to post projects. I don't know, just getting the word out, because I feel like there's a lot of indie game developers, for instance, who just don't know where to go for voice talent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people who will kind of be like, oh, I can help you. And there are a lot of, you know, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of legitimate people who are up and coming casting directors and this and that. I, I know some of them and they're great, but then there are also a few of them who will happily take the person's money if they don't know better and just give all the roles to themselves and their friends so it's kind of like mm. uh, yeah. I don't know I just right, I right, want right. other options so that people don't feel like that's their only way to go is if somebody approaches them and it's like I can pass this project for you because again there there are a lot of people who are legitimate who do that but some not so much yeah I mean, um well I hope uh, it continues, because I, I think it's a great resource, especially, well, not even just for beginners, but, I mean, beginners especially can sort of get some experience, because, um, one thing I always say is that you never know what one thing you lead to. Like, if you do one project, you don't know what will come from that if that gets attention or someone notices that. Yeah, Skullgirls used to be like an indie game. Right, and now so. that's a that's that's a huge thing now. That but, that just got didn't that get Japanese voices now? Yeah, which is so yeah, cool. That's, that's, um, that's crazy. Yeah, the yeah. the woman who played Marie in Japanese is um she was actually in another fighting game that I've played a bit um under night in birth etc etc i always forget the full name or like you know, I don't know but, um, yeah she played a character in that so you know, cool um Good idea. um oh yeah or the other thing too like ideally my goal is to kind of have it be people of all levels like we have some professionals we have like some sort of like semi-professionals mm. we have aspiring people and also to have a resource like we have a help forum and stuff like that so if someone's like hey um how do i do this thing in audacity or whatever they can post there and people yeah. will respond and be like oh i have this issue too or here's how i did it and we have like guides like i wrote a guide because people are always like well how do i make a demo reel and i'm like well you know this and that or if you're if you're like actually going into the industry you need a demo we're like produced professionally but if you're doing like mm. online projects i mean don't spend like two thousand dollars when you're not ready if it's just right. for online stuff you can make your own but there's a way to do it like there's still certain conventions that you have to follow essentially so i go you know like talk about how to do that and where you find the material and all this kind of stuff 
Because otherwise, it's like people will message me or message you, like, randomly on social media and be like, how do I do this thing? Which, I mean, that's fine, but it's like, we don't always have time, you know what I mean? To, like, right. answer when, like, 50 people are all messaging me, like, how do I how do I record my voice on my computer or whatever. So. Especially when it's the same question over and over Exactly. Again. So. What, what mic do you use? What's your setup? You know, I have an FAQ, but, you know, people don't read it. So. Right. And the thing is, it's like the equipment that, you know, like, for example, I do this for a living or for a good part of my living. So, like, my setup is going to be a bit more expensive because I upgraded to that after years. But I'm not right. going to be like, no, you don't have to buy this expensive setup if you're starting out and doing voiceovers exactly. for YouTube. You just need something that sounds good and isn't going to make you sound like you're recording with a potato or whatever. So, right, right. you know, but there's whole threads right. like that where people talk about like the equipment that they have and use or used to use and if they like it or not. So it's like that way you're also getting multiple people's opinion, not just one person. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good to, um, especially when you're starting out, get to know yes. other people who are trying to do the same thing you're doing. Um, and so, I, because I've met some, you know, very, very talented, nice people on Tumblr, and you know, now you know, I've you know, managed to meet a lot of really uh, talented, cool people that way. And so, it's good to have a community somewhere you can kind of, you know get feedback, get advice, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so, and actually I so know um, somebody that you voice act with a lot, Tamara, Total Spiffage, like, I oh, met yeah, her on great. Tumblr through the Homestuck community, because right. I had, like, a little production group of people who would do Homestuck comic dubs and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, and thank you for, I've, I've reached out to you a couple of times to help me, and uh, yeah. I'm always like... I'm always like, she's so good. <laughs> you should like, um, you should link me to the ones that you finished because oh, like I, I'm yeah. not really active on Tumblr. Like I, I need to produce. I have a couple JoJo comic dubs that have just been sitting there, and I need to produce. Like even like Antfish is in one of them and stuff, and like mm. um, I don't know. Just I've been busy, but oh, I mean yeah, I know I know people who are busier than me, so I feel like I just have uh, yep. issues with time management. <laughs> mm. Because, I mean, like, for example, I'm, I'm so bad about, like, going to the gym. I mean, I do try to go pretty often mm -hmm. and stuff, but I'm always like, oh, I'm so busy today with work. It's like, okay, well, one of my friends from the JoJo community works 12 hours a day, and she still finds time to work out and, like, play fighting games and practice and, like, like do all the stuff that I'm like, I don't have time to do this. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe I just need to, like, get my stuff together. And I think it is a lot of it is just kind of um, discipline too, like really forcing yourself to stick to it, uh, whether it's going to the gym or um, the creative process or something like that. Right. Uh, which can, which is hard harder than it, it sounds. Because it's so easy. I'm like, oh, but this love life event is going on right now. And I'm just, exactly. Like right now, there's Johanna and I. So is she your is she your uh how do you say it? Aquas? Aqua. Is that how you say it? Aqua. Yeah. Oh, it says aqua. Aqua. Oh, okay. like, um, like like water. <laughs> oh, okay. They're all like Spelled about totally the water. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know if it's like supposed to be like a French prince. It's kind of like how like muse sort of looks like use, but it's pronounced yeah. like that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I have a lot of favorite girls. It was so. <sighs> I don't even know because I also really really like Rico. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I do like Your Rico, is under but I also like, um, I think Mari is very funny. Yeah, I love that she's yeah. part Italian, because I'm actually, I want to go to Italy at some point. A lot of that is because my JoJo obsession, I'm terrible, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I mean, if, you, if, if that's if that's what you want, you know, don't don't be ashamed, you know, go for it. Go for what you want. That's what yeah, I, I, I want to go, because there's like a big Comic Con sort of thing. There every oh, year, okay. I guess, and there's like a ton of JoJo cosplayers from what I've been told. So mm. I'm like, I'm gonna go, and then I, I heard that Araki even showed up at it one year, just like oh. not as a guest, but just like went. Oh, he was just there. Yeah, oh. just kind of lurking. I heard he did that at AX one year too, like Ooh. way before I ever knew about JoJo, and I'm just like, yeah. Ah. My I, I what really if you hope met they him? get him. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> if they ever get him for Anime Expo, I would just, like, 
I would camp out if I have to bring a tent. Um, yeah. Because uh, it's it's so hard with big guests to like get their autograph because um, oh, yeah. the last guest that I was really excited about for AX was I think two years ago and it was Daisuke Shibatari who's the creator of Guilty Gear which is like my favorite oh, okay. game franchise and yeah 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 so I was like uh, I have to get up so early and wait in line and this and that but I was stressed as one of the characters from Guilty Gear and he looked up and he was like wow and so I felt mm -hmm. super excited. <laughs> You like melted on the spot. I'm I sure. did, I did, and yeah, I asked yeah, yeah. him what his favorite Queen song was because he's a big. I feel like he and Araki would be good friends. I don't know if they ever met, mm. but um, like he did reference JoJo at one point in Guilty Gear, and oh, a okay. ton of classic rock references. Um, yeah, lots of Guns N' Roses references, which is one of my favorite bands. Yeah. But he like, really, really right. likes Queen. Like, most clean references of anything, so. <laughs> mm. So I asked him, like, oh, what's your favorite clean song? And actually, my best friend and I did a panel at ALA where we talked about, like, classic rock references and animated things. Oh, cool, cool. I know you were trying to get a JoJo game, and then you actually you managed to do it, right? Not that year, the following oh, year. Oh, not that year, the following year. Okay, okay. Rocky and I have not read Jojo, but that man is a handsome vampire. Yeah, he, is just, he like he's immortal apparently. Yeah. Yeah. I just like that. Yeah. He used the know. stone mask. Like David Bowie aged, but he still looks stunningly hot. He yeah. was like a fine wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. He just got better and better. And some 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 men are like that. And women too. Are, oh yeah, some people are just they just get hotter and hotter. It doesn't matter. I mean, I feel like all ages of him were hot in different ways. Like, because I really, really like that. I love like the Ziggy look with the mullet and stuff. But, yeah. Um, you know, I liked his later looks as well. And then, of course, in the eighties, the the Goblin oh, King look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, David Bowie. He was a specimen. Mm -hmm. Yes, a fine one. Can I research that? <laughs> <laughs> so you actually um and you you did you grow up in alaska mm -hmm. is that right yeah. and so what is alaska like <laughs> can i just ask oh, that because i've never like yeah. what is, i i just have this i don't even know what alaska is I mean, which, what what area in Alaska did you um, grow up in? I'm from Anchorage, which is where a lot of people live who are from there, because it's the major city, basically. Um, there mm. are a lot of other areas. It's the biggest state. Everyone thinks Texas is the biggest state. Oh, no, Alaska's yeah. huge. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, I mean, Anchorage is, like, the biggest city, and so a lot of people live there or around that area. And it's actually pretty similar. Like... I mean, people kind of imagine it's just this wasteland with ice and snow <laughs> and this and that. Polar and I mean, bears, yeah. yeah, it does snow a lot in the winter and it does get really cold. But I mean, it doesn't snow all year round, at least in the part that I'm from. And mm. it's not like dark all the time. I mean, it, it's dark a lot in the winter and then it stays like later in the summer, but it's not like... People are thinking of like the North Pole where they get months of, <laughs> yeah. of that, and that's not where I'm from. It's not like that, but um, yeah, it's like a lot of the same stores and restaurants and all the kind of stuff that we have everywhere else. We have it here too. Um, some stuff it took longer to add, but they're just kind of like building it up and this and that. Um, there's still communities for different stuff. Like um, there's a Pokemon community. That um, I used to be one of the gym leaders for them. Oh, okay. Um, I helped out with like, a Pokemon Go event while I was up there. We have yeah. um, really big anime communities. Mm. There's gaming communities. Like, um, I used to be a part of the fighting game community up there and the Smash community. And now I know like the, the stuff for like League of Legends up there is really big. I don't play that, so I don't know too much about it, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, how often do you um, manage to go up there? Two or three times a year. Okay, cool. How long is that flight? Um, I try to say, because there's a 
stop along the way. Like, I always stop in Seattle or Oregon. Um, mm, okay. Maybe, like, six hours? -ish? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That, I would like to go there. Like, just because I hear... I, I had a friend of a friend who lived there. Or I think probably still lives there. And so, I... Yeah, it, seem, it seems very, like, a nice... I hear the uh, scenery in some areas is just beautiful. Oh, so. absolutely. I miss that. Because now that I'm... In the LA area, it's like uh, it's so crowded and like traffic <laughs> and parking yeah. is a nightmare. And I'm just like, uh, I don't like dealing with that. And we don't have sales tax up there, which is so nice. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, because here it's almost 10%. So it adds up. Like sometimes, because I'm a makeup junkie, so sometimes if I know I'm going home, I'll do a big Sephora order and just have it shipped to my parents' house so that I don't have to pay yeah. sales tax. Right. Pro tip right there. <laughs> it's smart. Man, no sales tax. Oh, that's God. nice. I mean, who knows um, how long that'll last. But... Yeah. So, going back to... Because uh, I, I like to ask people this. So, where... How did you... What did you first start doing on the internet? I'm not even talking voiceover. I'm talking about what brought you to the internet in the first place. Oh, um, well, I started on, like, AOL when I was a oh, kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, instant messenger and stuff? Yeah. I yeah. used to want to do, like, I used to want to work with computers and do website design and mm. stuff, so I taught myself HTML when I was really young, and mm. then, of course, things kept evolving and I mm. couldn't really keep up with it, but I used yeah. to make websites about, you know, whatever I was into, like, bad... <laughs> or this or that. Yeah, like fan sites and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Geo cities. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Geo shitties. And I remember, oh, like, yeah. um, guest books, for example, were a thing back in the day, and so I would always get uh, things yeah. like, I hate your website, it sucks! And I'm like, <laughs> Mom, someone said my website sucks! Man, the GeoCities community is vicious. <laughs> and it's funny because now I'm a voice actor, so I deal with hate almost every day. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I get my fair share of that too. It's uh, you you eventually just kind of get accustomed to it in a sad sort of way, or at least I do. I don't know. How, how do you um, how do you deal with? hate comments on the internet. What's funny, I, I was reminded of your video where you were like reading YouTube comments, like you were reading uh, yeah. of YouTube comments, it was so funny. Um, <laughs> some of them are really funny, some of the ones that I get, so. Um, but there there are actually a few that can be kind of hurtful, like most of them like, eh, oh, whatever. Course, like if yeah. someone if someone says they don't like my voice in something, you're like, oh, the Japanese voice is better, because that's the thing you'll always get. Oh, the Japanese yeah. voice is so much better. And I feel like with a lot of those cases, nothing, like they could literally have, like if the Japanese actress was bilingual, they could literally have them like, do both the Japanese and English versions, and they'd hate it because it was in English if they didn't know. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's or if they like, got like, if they got Meryl Streep to do it, they'd be like, oh, just, just not as good. Oh, as the, the performance Japanese. is terrible, or what? You right. know, it's like exactly. No matter how much, because a lot of times, like we are listening to the original line oh, for yeah, each yeah. line we do and stuff, and so it's like, but you know, people are just very, and and I get it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's some things that I'm really into that are just like too weird for me to watch it play in English because I'm just so used mm. to the original voices and stuff. Yeah. And I, I knew for sure that Love Live would be like that for people because the game and the show have been out for a long time. Like, I was addicted to the game, you know, way oh, before yeah. I ever right. You were already a time. fan, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, like, I think the times when it, it starts to yeah. hurt a little are when they make it personal. Like, it's not about my performance, but they make it about me as a person. So, because yeah, yeah. I remember there were there were a few of those for Love Live, and they actually like, went through all my personal accounts, and they were trying to find things to attack me over, and Jeez. you know, like stuff like that, or like um, when they like find my cosplay pictures, and they're like, oh, she like she's so fat and ugly, I can't believe she voices my waifu, she totally ruins like stuff like that. It's like I feel like people didn't realize that you read this stuff. Oh, mm. like, I mean, maybe if you're really big and famous, you don't, but 
And people always say, like, don't read the comments, never read the comments, but it's so hard because yeah. you always want to see, like, um, you know, if I voice a character or something, I always want to see, like, on Twitter, oh, what are people saying about the character or whatever, and, mm. you know, there's always somebody who's like, ew, I can't believe that, like, you know, that girl from Brawl Taunts is voicing my character, gross, or whatever, and then, but then there's, like, ten other people who are like, that's so awesome, I was a fan of her on Newgrounds <laughs> back in the day, but it's like you read the one out of the ten that's bad, and that's what you think about. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. Um, although I, I think at this point I have read, I think there was a period, and this was maybe like a, because my audience, I guess, kind of, kind of skyrocketed out of nowhere. Not out of nowhere, but kind of grew to a bigger extent than I was anticipating. And, uh, the comments were rolling in. And I, I know what you mean in that, like, one comment, you know, you can get like 20 glowing comments. And then one comment, you'll just, you'll just, you just think about that. Um, so I know exactly what you're talking about, but... Yeah, uh, and it's hard, too, when they, um... I mean, I'm not sure if... It, I would imagine it's worse for women in terms of this, but... I feel like oh, people attack, like, the way I look and stuff, and it's like, but I'm not putting that out there for you to critique. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, like, I have a cosplay page or whatever, but it's like... Just on unrelated, like stuff that's not even related to that, like stuff that's related to my voice acting. People be like, "Oh, like she's, she's so fat and ugly, and her makeup is terrible, and like this and that." And I'm just like, "What does that have to do with the way I play this character?" Like, I don't right. Well, people are just they're, they're just petty. I mean, one thing, one, th and although, um, I would say you know a lot, a good chunk of the internet is just petty and just wants to get a reaction out of you, um, but. Uh, overall, I'm sure you get good comments, because I think you are very talented. Um, yeah, I think it is a matter of, like, it's, and also the, the vocal majority kind of thing, where a lot of times if people like the job of something and they don't care, they're just not going to say anything. They're not going to be like, oh yeah, the voices were fine, or whatever, unless it's specifically yeah. a discussion about that. But if people hate mm. them, they'll make sure to post everywhere, like, oh, dubs are ruining everything, oh, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Tweet it out, yeah, yeah, right. Like, they're going to be a lot more vocal when they're negative, vocal. I feel like, overall. But, I mean, I've noticed that, too. Like, some of the stuff I had to disconnect from because I'm like, these are generic insults that they just use mm. for, for especially right. women whenever they don't like something they do. It's like oh, you can't yeah. even go to... You know, say, like, a video of a woman giving a speech or something, no matter, like, how intelligent and well thought it is without somebody, like, critiquing the way she looks. It's just, mm. you know, people are so, like, there's, I mean, I've seen them call, like, the most gorgeous cosplayers and actresses ever ugly and stuff, because that's, yeah. like, the way they tear somebody down who they don't like. They just, there's just a good section of them that just want to get... They just want to be no. I, it's like they're screaming to be noticed in a negative reactionary way. And it's just gross. Yeah, um, I think it makes them feel like more powerful or something. Like, oh, right. I know that you know if I call this person ugly, it will probably make her feel self-conscious, and then I win because I tore down someone else's. Self you know, it's like whenever people, I'm just like, why don't you focus on bettering yourself? Yeah. Like, I remember there is this one guy, and a lot of them are aspiring voice actors themselves, and that's why I'm like, mm. you don't realize that these things that you're saying, like, these could be, like, future peers of yours. Like, of course, you know, yeah. these people could maybe direct you in something. Like, um, there was this one guy who was just, like, very awful to me about a performance of mine mm. in Death Battle, the one yes. episode that I did. I think I saw the Yep, about this. and <laughs> and he was like, you know, it wasn't like constructive criticism. It wasn't even because even if someone's like, eh, I wasn't a fan. I'm like, okay, cool, that's that's your deal. But he was right, like, right. straight up awful about it. And then and then yeah. he like tweets at the creators and he's like, hey, can you cast me in this? I'm an aspiring voice actor. And they're like, um, yeah, let's look at all the times that you insulted our actors that we cast and directed and do you want to be in it? Like, no. <laughs> People don't understand that uh, your reputation, especially if you want to be in a creative field, is very important. And if you... And I don't understand the logic behind 
insulting someone who is a an established voiceover person. Like, what are you thinking? Like, you... First of all, you're just severing that contact at all completely. And then you're also just making yourself look bad. And it will come it will come to get you at some point. Exactly. If you have a bad bad attitude and bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And nobody's saying that you can't be critical, nobody's saying that you have to think right. every everything is great, but you definitely have to keep in mind how you express those opinions. And you know, because there's there are things, like there are certain dubs of things or this or that where I'm like, this was not good. This mm. you know, I can I can straight up say I did not like this, but a lot of times I have to keep in mind, you know, it's not always the act, because sometimes they can be very good actors, but maybe they're not right. directed, maybe they yeah. don't have contacts to the lines, because I know I've worked on games where we just didn't have any contacts, so the lines sound mm. out of place, um, yeah. or sometimes even, like, people, like, the, the clients will be like, no, we want it said this way, or like, you know, I've worked with people especially on indie game projects and this and that, mm. where yep. maybe they didn't really have directing experience. So their way of directing you is they're like, okay, now I'm going to say the line and you just say it the way that uh, I yeah, said it. Reads. Yeah, which, yeah, which is cool for like parodies and stuff. Mm. Like if I'm doing like a bridge series or this, I'm like, yeah, by all means give me line reads because I feel like when you write it, you know the comedic timing and delivery and a sure. lot of what makes it funny kind of hinders on that. But, yep. you know, when it's like a game or something and it's like okay well are you sure you don't want this because like, a lot of times they're not an actor themselves and stuff right. so it's like yeah i mean I'll, I'll give you what you want but sometimes when they give like this really like their line reels like no we can't go <laughs> in there and it's like yeah okay if you want me to say it like that but of course like guess who people rip apart it's the uh -huh. actors so yeah um especially now that i've also, you know, done my share of voiceover. Um, I am much more forgiving, or at least much more like, like if I listen to a performance in something where I'm like, that's a little shaky, I give the actor at this point the benefit of the doubt. There's so many factors, can, whether it's the director, or whether it's just a bad script, frankly, or whether it's... Oh um, yeah, bad scripts, or um, yeah. something that I like to bring up too, because a lot of people, um, a big reason that you'll see given for why people don't like anime dubbed is because they're like, oh, the delivery sounds awkward. And I, I can actually agree with that. Like, a lot of times the deliveries are awkward, but there are a couple reasons for that. Like, being, for one, you are very restricted by timing. So, yeah. you know, a line that, for example, would maybe... Say, like we'd say quicker like we just kind of throw it away or whatever when talking to somebody that obviously has to fit the mouth it has to fit what's going on on the screen so yeah. you're limited by that um mm -hmm. there's also the issue of just because the languages are different um and you know i speak a decent amount of japanese so i can you know kind of get what's going on when we watch the original preview and this and that and obviously like one of the things in japanese because it's just like structured differently it sounds completely normal to like pause in the middle of the sentence or to like trail off and then finish mm. it but like in english it doesn't really work to have this big hitch in the, the middle flow. of the sentence right so you know when you and sometimes I don't know, like, I know a lot of good script writers now who Coming just kind of, they find a way around that to still keep the meaning of the original line, but make it mm. just flow more naturally. But when you have a line like, um, in terms of, like, I really like cats. They're just mm -hmm. so cute. Like, it's just, it's very hard to sell that delivery, but you have to because We're there's pauses picture. in the animation. Yeah, so it's yep, like, yep. you know, I think people aren't really aware sometimes of, or sometimes um, the other issue is just just written really close to translation, like really direct translation, and sometimes that's yeah. what the client wants, so there's no way around that, but um, right. you know, when you're sometimes you'll just be delivering a line and it's like people don't talk like this and a lot of times if I'm going to be with the director it's like realize that and like yeah let me rewrite this real quick so it still has the same meaning and fits the picture but you know sometimes you'll have a line where it's like 
nobody, you know, if I'm playing like a 16 year old character and they're using yeah. certain words, I'm like, I've never heard somebody talk about like it. It's this. like way too literal of a Exactly, yeah, that's the like word that I'm the looking Google for. Translate. Very yeah. literal. Right. Yeah. Um, I also find that I think a lot of directors, um, they have an idea of how anime dubs should sound. And maybe they listen to like a lot of anime dubs, I mean, even some older anime dubs, and I mean, a lot of dubs, and I think dubs are a lot better now, but back in the day, the dubs were a lot less natural, mm -hmm. I think, in their delivery. Absolutely. And I, think they, well, that, well, I used to be like a pro like. at like the anime schoolgirl voice like that. Oh, I yeah. thought I was a normal high school student, but then I discovered I had magical powers and stuff like that. Right. And now it's like people would laugh, you know, people have come to expect like a better delivery, you know. Quality, so, yeah. yeah. But it's like back in the day, that was just how it all sounded, you know, so no one really thought, right. but now especially that people can go on Crunchyroll or, you know, like, go on Netflix and they can, like, see the original episodes in Japanese so easily and so quickly and they can see it before yeah. the English version even comes out. They're not, like, waiting for DVDs or VHSs or whatever. So I <laughs> yeah. feel like that has right. also made people more critical because they have such easy access to the original mm. media. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and anime dubs have just come along. Absolutely. Lot. And now I think that they and you know they're at a point now where they are. Um, I think at least good. So, yeah. I mean, you'll have hits uh, or misses like with anything, but. Um, right. But yeah, like the acting style, like you were talking uh, about, that's. And I know that some projects are definitely trying to move away from that, lightning. but again, it's like because mm. of the way the mouths are and this and that, it's like. It just sort of lends itself to, like, a bigger, more over-the-top style in general, I would say. And I've actually yeah. had issues with that when doing stuff that's, like, okay, not anime or JRPGs, like, stuff that's more realistic, because they call it, like, cinematic mm. acting. And I've been, like, yeah. working with one of my mentors on trying to get better at those kind of reads, and he's always like... Why are you projecting so much? And I'm like, because yeah, I'm always being yeah, told yeah. to project more when I'm doing anime. So it's like, you do, you know, if you're always being told that you just start doing it and you're like, okay, I guess I need, like, my level needs to be up here as the default or whatever. And then you're doing something that's mm. not that. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you're having an everyday conversation, you're not, you know, proclaiming your like love for a right. character. You gotta, you gotta di dial it back a little bit. But even sometimes in anime, like in a scene where it's like two characters more intimately talking, and you know, they will mm. still want it kind of. You know, I would say that the level is generally raised for anime than it would be heightened. Yeah. Mm. So then, if I'm doing like, I don't know, I don't really get a ton of opportunities to audition for like Western style games or this or that, but I know. A big thing with that mm. is they just want it to sound like like humans talking to each other. So that's something I'm right. not cartoony, mm. just kind of everyday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will say one more thing in defense, I guess, of um, uh, especially dub actors is if you listen to the Japanese voices in anime, they are very heightened mm -hmm. in their in their emotion in their delivery. Um, so I think people. I think it's easier for people to be like, oh, well, in English it sounds so exaggerated, but in the Japanese it sounds so normal. But really, if you listen to their performances, and this isn't a bad thing, but they do project mm -hmm. a lot. And they do they do have very kind of over-the-top performances, but because it's in a different language, um, and it just, I guess it's not as noticeable. Yeah, because I, I tell people, too, it's like... If it's not your native, like, even if you understand some Japanese, like, this or that, if it's not your right. native language, you're not going to know whether the delivery sounds natural or not. And I mean, like, I, from what I understand, the performances do tend to generally be very, very good in Japanese because they take voice acting super seriously, and it's like, you know, something yeah. that you really have to study. It's not like you just fall into it like people can tend to do over here from what i understand it's it's like a very mm. like disciplined kind of thing that you go through or whatever but um right. you know but until like any other language or whatever it's like if that's not 
if you're not like fluent in it and like a native speaker, you're not gonna understand if their inflections sound natural or not. Even if you understand what they're saying, even yeah. if you hear it and you're like, well, that sounds good. The voice sounds good and the emotion sounds good. And one example that I always give of stuff like that is if you ever um, played some games where they made like an English version, but it was just done in Japan by mm. random people who spoke English. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm sure people heard this and were like, oh, that sounds good because, you know, it has emotion. But then if it's the line like, um, I remember playing some game once where there was a line like, no, there's a grenade or whatever. And it's like, well, it sounds like the guy's yelling. His voice matches the character, right? But then it's like yeah, for a native right. English speaker, you're like, no, that inflection sounds laughable, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm always telling people, it's like, yeah, whenever it's a language that's not your first language, I feel like it's a lot easier because you're just, you're not knowing whether the delivery sounds natural or not. You just know mm. the emotion fits, the voice fits. It sounds good to me. Right. Right. And also sometimes it's just the first version mm -hmm. you hear. Like, I know people say, I know people will say the same thing about reverse, about Dragon Ball. Like, they're so used to the dub that they hear the original voices, they think it sounds weird. It's just really, I think a lot of it also depends on just what you hear. Oh, absolutely. Which it's why, like, um, but that doesn't, it's so yeah. hard as a voice actor if you ever have to replace a voice in something. I mean, even back in oh, the day yeah. and, like, you know, flash animations or this or that sometimes i would take over a role if like they lost contact with the original actor like um you know i used to be in a cartoon called bonus stage way back in the day yeah. i remember that cartoon and yeah 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 i came in at like episode 75 or something and the character yeah. that i played mm. had been voiced by the creator of the series who was a guy and he would just pitch mm. up his voice right and, yeah. you know, normally you think people would be like, yay, we're going to get an actual girl to play. But because, I mean, they were just so used to that, like, pitched up yeah, 74 voice. episodes. Exactly, because yeah. that's what right. they've heard and that's what sounds normal. So it's like, whoa, why is this person coming in? You know what I mean? It's like right. people don't like getting used to a new thing or whenever people are like, oh, the Japanese version is always better. I'm like, well... I think the original, like, the performance in the original language tends to be good because they don't have all those restrictions on, you know, oh, we have to yeah. match what's already been done in a different language. Right. But I'm like, okay, watch exactly. King of the Hill in Japanese. Watch the Japanese dub of Family Guy. <laughs> like, you'll do it for laughs, of course, but I'm like, you wouldn't watch right. that over, you know, something that was originally recorded in English. So exactly. I think a lot of yeah, times yeah, it, yeah. it is what you hear first and what it you know, the language that it's originally in, I think, tends to be kind of the, the best to watch. Kind of yeah. what you compare it to. I mean, there, there's some, exce like, At Cowboy least, Bebop yeah. is just phenomenal in English, for example. Mm. Yeah, and I think it depends on the localization, too. Like, I think a really phenomenal English script can really bring up a good dub. Um, and so... I guess, uh, bottom line, people, uh, give dub actors a break, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not their fault, um, at least not, you know, there are so many different factors, and I guess just something I want people to, I guess, keep in mind, uh, one day. If you're the type of person who's like, oh, all English dubs suck, well, maybe, maybe think about the stuff we talked about and, you know, give, you know, at least, uh, ease up. Or, um, that's, that's you know, my, just the fact yeah. that things are coming a long way, like, I, I was thinking about... Ace Attorney, um, recently because of the Beat Spirit of Justice, like, yeah. last month, I yeah. mean, um, I mm -hmm. had to restart at one point when my DS got stolen, so it took me longer than it should have oh, to get and stuff, but it's like, yeah. you know, now that there's cutscenes, like little cutscenes and stuff, like, yay, my trucy, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they actually move to getting actors to do it because I've been playing the Phoenix Wright games for like a decade oh, and when all they had well, were yeah. the objections and the hold it's they just had like random employees from the Capcom localization staffers. team do it and I remember yeah. thinking like I should go work for Capcom someday and then maybe I can be a voice in, in Ace <laughs> Attorney and then you know yeah. and then they moved to using actors once they started getting cutscenes like in Dual Destinies but yeah so it's like you know Hey, at least things are, and I feel like the quality that people are expecting has gone up too, because you look at, say, 
something like Overwatch, where the voice acting is just phenomenal, and, you know, it's like if you took a game of that caliber and put just random people who weren't actors in it or whatever, it's like people would be like, what is this, you know? Right, right. Especially because video games, and even anime to an extent, have become more mainstream. They become, they're, they're much less niche now. Like, even though anime is still slightly niche, but it's still definitely in the public eye much more. And so I think the standards for everything, because, you know, compared to, like, you know, uh, 20 years ago, the, the voice acting, or 10 years ago, and now there's a huge jump, especially because video games are more cinematic now. So, um, I think people are appreciating voice acting more now, which I think is good. I've always wanted to appreciate the good Your stuff and, you know... Attack. Just, I guess, just appreciate it in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sitting down and talking. Um, uh, why don't you... Where are you at? Where, plug some... I know, well, first of all, check out the Voice Acting Club. Yes. Uh, and what, what's the website for that? Voiceactingclub.com, so it's super easy okay. to remember. Okay. And then where can we find you on social media? Twitter at Rina Chan, R I N A C H A N. Um, I have a Facebook page you can follow. Um, you can just look up my name, or the um, URL for it is Kira Voices. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have, I don't really post on Instagram too much, but my account on there is Killer Coffee Queen. Okay. And is there anything out right now that you want people to check out that you voiced in or stuff that's been semi-recently? Um, yeah, Fire Emblem Heroes, obviously. Mm -hmm. obviously. Um, I have something so exciting coming out, like, <laughs> soon -ish. Okay. I, I wish I, like, I was going to say the exact date, and I'm like, no, people could look up what's coming out on that date, and someone might guess, so, uh, but there's, uh, okay. there's a big thing that I really want to talk about that I can't, but... Okay, okay. Soon. <laughs> well, if you follow her on social media, you'll see it. So, uh, anything else uh, you want to mention? I know you were in you were in Hunter Hunter. Yeah. I love Hunter yeah, Hunter. Yeah, I was Zushi. Um, my my art finished, unfortunately, but, you know, check it out if you have it. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Any last any last rolls you want to throw out there, or should we wait for that big announcement? Um, wait for the big one, but l let's talk about some of the stuff that I did with uh, you, too, real quick. Okay, sure. Because I know I, I did a couple comic dumps for you, so yeah, what I do? I, do um, I did Athena for one of them. Um, you, yeah, you did um, uh, for Ghost Trick. You helped me out with one of those. I will right. link those to you. I will oh, yeah, I, I loved that game. I'd forgotten about it. I, I love Ghost Trick, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, if you go to my uh, voice acting time, the Crozy Voices, uh, I believe I have tagged you or something. So if you guys want to check those out, and I'll probably just link them in the description too. Um, but she has helped me out quite a few times, and uh, I've always been very appreciative. And I will, I will send those to you for sure. Uh, I, I, I thought I did, but I guess I it just slipped my mind. So. Thank you very much, um, and we will, or I will see you guys next episode. Thank you very much again. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye everybody.
Your angel is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Your middle tower has fallen. Your middle tower is under attack. Your middle tower has fallen. Coming through. Hi, hi. Fresh mate. Your middle tower has fallen. Message is not a sound. Boy, fresh race! Chopper. Oh, 
Yes! Ah! Carnage! Blossom! And now... fallen. Your ancient is under. Your middle tower has fallen. Dire victory. 